Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. So we're work, working on the 1985 Honda 200S, ATC 200S, and it's got two problems. We did get it started again, big home run right there. Uh, one problem is this front tire is shot and it's dry rotted. I think you guys can see that cut in there. And the second problem is it won't idle. So we're going to have to take a, a quick look at the carburetor. Anyway, about fixing the tire, there are two ways to do it. We got the old tube way here, right? Tubes are about 10, 12 bucks for this thing. No big deal. Or we have the slime way of doing it. I'm going to be 100% honest. I've slimed tires and not had them come back. But then I was watching um, one of Andrew's videos, and he was working on a tractor tire. He slimed it, and he took it off the tractor, and, well, actually, he tilted the entire tractor side to side to get the slime to really coat the inside of the tire, and it worked. This tire is about the worst I've seen when it comes to cracks and so forth. And I'm going to um, I'm going to take it right off the all-terrain vehicle. I'm going to slime it to see if we could actually... Um, see if it'll hold. Once again, tubes are, tubes are about 12 bucks. That container's about 25. Theoretically, this tire should only eat need 8 ounces. I'm thinking it's going to be more like 16. So it's probably going to take the major part of half of that container or a full quarter of that container. So from a price point of view between the tube and the slime, it's not crazy outstanding. From a work point of view, if you don't have to break the bead, obviously it's a lot easier. And I'm not sure what's going on with that rim and bead. My anticipation is pretty rusty and nasty. So I have the feeling um, that front wheel, if the slime doesn't work, I'm going to have to change it. So anyway, let's give it a shot. To distribute the slime well, I want to pull this front wheel off. And just quickly, the way I've found the best way to do it, is to just loosen these, don't take them off completely. Um, by doing it that way, right, this block still supports the axle as you try to turn on it. I've also tried the spoon wrench for uh, removing these, and actually I was jumping up and down on it when it bent like this. You, uh, you gotta go hammer gun. Make sure your direction is correct. Right. Obviously, <laughs> you're going to need plenty of that. So, anyway, let me finish removing it. We'll slime it and see if we can't get it to hold air. So, I think you could see the tire <laughs> and you could see the... Uh, the slime kind of working its way out of the uh, the area where it's way cracked on the bottom. Obviously, if you're putting up your all-terrain vehicle for any period of time, one should really sit it on something. Back in the day, they used to suggest sitting these 200S machines on a milk crate, you know, the metal milk crates. They were still around in 85. All that's around now with the plastic ones and this thing over a period of time will just kind of crunch it down. That's much better. A couple of things when you're tightening this thing here, you really don't have to tighten it in like all the way because if you do, you'll begin crushing these two together, which will make the uh, brake uh, housing drag on the wheel, on the brake drum actually. So, you know take it easy with that and also these things don't need to be torqued to a million foot-pounds right you know hand tight is good enough you know you could look at your all-terrain vehicle once in a while to make sure things aren't getting loose and falling off now to the carburetor so it's a couple of days later and you could see some of the juice came out of the tire now it's time to get on the carburetor. Um, by the way, it stays inflated, so the tire's fixed. It looks like it worked. 
how does one get to the carburetor? A carburetor that will not idle. So you got to get to the air cleaner. Not all that hard. Take the air cleaner off. I have to buy an air cleaner for this, obviously. You take these two bolts out, these two bolts out, undo that, undo the other side of the extender, and you could get the air cleaner out. And once you get the air cleaner out, you can unbolt the carburetor. You want to take the gas tank off. Saves you from twisting about too much. So let's get that carburetor loose and figure out why it won't idle. Okay, the carburetor is off. I'm going to use the ugliest screwdriver in the world to get into the uh, bowl. I already cracked these loose, right? I find, you know, being one that drops things regularly, that if one uses this pan with all the uh, little ridges in it, that's typically helpful. So, the carburetor doesn't look half bad. The, um, the idle jet must be clogged. It won't idle. It'll run. It'll gun up, but it won't idle. So this is the high-speed jet, right? As you pull the throttle, it pulls the needle out of this jet, which uh, richens the mixture quite a lot. That little one is the idle jet, so that one's probably clogged. And this needle valve adjusts the idle mixture. So what we're going to do, I'm, I'm going to take it apart anyway. Just make sure everything's clean. I'm going to take the pin out and clean the uh, clean the valve that shuts the gas off, the float valve, right? Typically, there are little wings on that that come off on the edge. I'll show you. Um, you always want to make sure they're clean. Otherwise, they hang up. So anyhow, I'm going to drop this pin, which is falling right out for me. Right, and we can take it right apart. Anyway, I'm going to need two hands for this, so let's get to it. When you're working on a carb, you always want to be asking yourself, what are the symptoms and what am I finding? So this is the idle jet, so to speak. And if you look right down the center, see, see that little hole there? There you go. So it's clear. Right, you see those two holes and those two holes. It's clear and that's good. I mean, it was a little blocked, not enough to kill it. This is the main jet, right? So you guys could kind of see as I go by. I'm trying to see, those are all clear and those are clear. So really wasn't the jets but what I did find is the idle mixture um, adjustment was tightened all the way in so that would explain why it wouldn't idle I probably rebuilt this carburetor before and I might have screwed up anyway so I'm gonna uh, just give it a quick um, clean out run some solvent through it some clean dry air and put it back together and we'll be ready to go okay here's the gas tank off that 200s and unfortunately it appears to have a couple of problems um, looks like somebody glassed it up here so that's first of all second of all looking at this closely it looks like it's cracked and it's gonna leak so we're gonna hold off on using this gas tank for the time being it is empty that's never good for him and it was bolted on not completely but it was bolted on so um, I think I did use it at some point anyway I'm gonna set up the camera we'll give this thing a cold and old start okay let's see what this thing sounds like once again, cold start right hand right on the intake there. 
I had already checked the oil, set the choke. I got a small gas leak here. Um, it's never good. <laughs> sometimes they start, sometimes they don't. GoPro on and take this puppy out for a ride. Okay, time for a ride. So this thing seems to prefer not being choked. And it's warm from before. Nice. So this is an 85, it's got an upshift pattern. And the shifter's not in a great place. It's always good when they move. So the first three-wheeler, many of you know this, that I've managed to keep is a Honda ATC 200S. So this thing is kind of my first love. I bought it. I don't have an air cleaner on it. I do have the air box. Anyway, I bought this thing, or bought that one, back in, back in 19, I think it was 86 or 87. And I still have it. quite honestly for romping this thing. I romp typically in more of a clockwise direction. Oh, so it's tucking a little bit there. You know how the side, as you're leaning on the tire, it tucks. So I don't know if it's, uh, Sliding. Getting tire flex. Something's going on there. I filled that tire. I filled the tires and checked them before we started this. But I am getting a little tuck there. Enough of a tuck where I'm a little concerned to lean it too much. I haven't been 
back here since the storm. Looks like my buddy Chuck has been and he did some cleanup. This is definitely one of the better um, 200S's in the Horde. I am out of gas. Nice. Timed that perfectly. We'll just let the car run out and we're good. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I've been uh, watching some more of my compatriots videos. And one thing they do... They kind of start a project and they keep going all the way to the end. For me, I have a tendency to start a project and get to the point where I need parts or I hit some kind of blockade. And then the project disappears for a while, then it comes back. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's what's better. I'm, I kind of like the idea of going from project to project. So for me, it's better to hop around, but I'm trying to get a little better with the playlists also. That way, for, for those of you who kind of check in on a video, um, and then you can find it again right, right in the playlist. So one's always trying to improve a little bit, right? Trying to make your, uh, your viewing experience better. And in the meantime, I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember, feet down, heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day, even if it's hot as heck like today. Heat advisory and all, you know. Anyway, take care, folks. Be safe.